I have been saying for months now that the cure is worse than the disease. And there's a lot to that statement today. We're talking about the virus, which shall not be named. Of course, no, I'm not going to get through this segment without mentioning Corona, COVID-19. And it's it, it's to even start a segment going, well, gee, I hope I can avoid the YouTube censors on this one is obscene. It, it, it really is a, a, a atrocious that we live in a world where the conversation around the most pressing issue of our time, this dark cloud over humanity right now. We can't even talk about this openly without without being censored. And I've had videos taken down. Uh, I think most importantly, Ben Swan's video taken down where he gives you the science about how masks don't work or uh, excuse me, actually don't work in, in clinical settings for limiting transmission of the virus. This has been tested, this has been done. The science is clear. Masks do not meaningfully reduce transmission. Now, they could have some, you know, other other effect of, of limiting, you know, your, your transmission of droplets. I'm not trying to deny the physical reality, but when actually examined in a lab setting with, with, with lo- prolonged use of breathing in, you know, a damp environment, touching your face, all those things, the transmission was not limited by wearing masks. So, yes, you can still say, yeah, science is real. Physics is real. Doctors wearing them in environments where they they don't want to sneeze into an open wound, yeah, there's a good reason to wear masks. But it's like quarantine right now. You know, a quarantine is supposed to be when you isolate sick people. Uh, tyranny is when you isolate healthy people. And what we've got is widespread forced isolation. I've been looking at this from the economic perspective since the beginning as well. And the big economic cliff that we went over was the unemployment crisis, the forced unemployment crisis. Yes, and you could track that. If you look at the numbers, boom, unemployment skyrocketing, unemployment claims, setting historical records. And you could look at all of the other consequences of that, right? Rises, uh, or rising domestic violence, rising uh, disp- uh, just desperation economically, especially now as people hit the end of their savings. We see the eviction crisis, right? That there is a uh, oncoming tidal wave of evictions. And it's not going to be a cliff like the unemployment that happens, boom, by government mandate, but this cascading effect economically that's affecting everybody, not just YouTube content creators and podcasters, right? It really is affecting everybody across the board. And, you know, I, I like to think in some ways that because I live off grid, because I'm down three miles of private dirt road, because I don't have a wage slave job and you know I'm, I'm very independent in a lot of ways that I'm, I'm not affected by this. And in some ways it was like, oh, wow, this is nice. You know, we have a place to come home to where we don't have to worry about having our utilities cut because we said the wrong thing about Corona and hosted a party in defiance of shutdown laws, which is actually happening in LA County right now. It's, it's like that, you know, drugs could ruin your life. So if you if we catch you doing drugs, we're going to ruin your life kind of mentality. Like there's a health risk. And if we see you, uh, you know, not taking appropriate precautions, we're going to subject you to great. I mean, they're fining people. They're locking people up. And, and subjecting them to conditions where they're going to have greater risk of exposure to Corona. Even just in our retail experiences here in Arizona, But this is everywhere in the country and a lot of places in the world now. Walmart. Everything else is shut down, but you can go to Walmart, right? Not literally everything, but you get my point. Business is being consolidated, so the rich get richer, the poor get poor. Shocking, right? But even there, the policy, well, we can only have one door. So as people come in, we're going to funnel them to one entrance, whether they're wearing masks or not. And then we're going to see if they want to wear a mask. We're going to force you to not distance before asking you to distance in our stores. And I've been saying from the beginning, the cure is worse than the disease, right? Which could just be economic. And if you look at it that way, you go, oh, well, Adam, you're heartless, right? And I don't think that's true. I don't think that's fair to say, well, look, is it, is it worth? Because you can, you can turn, you know, is, is it worth comparing lives to dollars? Adam, you can't quantify the value of a life. No, but I can turn dollars into lives the other way around, right? When it's a life-saving medical procedure. 
when it's a, a vaccine for uh, a, a you know place where there's a legitimate application in sub-Saharan Africa where you know they, these things save lives. So yeah, you could look at it that way. But if we're spending the money out and we're making the economic sacrifice to save lives. Well, are we? Really? Do you have, do you have the science on that? Can you back that up? Because everything that we've seen would say that the corona deaths are grossly exaggerated, right? You know, the guy who died of coronavirus right before hitting the ground after his parachute failed to open in a skydiving accident, the motorcyclist who they were right before, you know, his, his, his motorcycle accident happened and he, he had his skull crushed. He was, oh yeah, he died of COVID or the, or the gunshot wound victim, right? He was shot in the head, but right before the bullet pierced his skull, died of corona. So they counted that as a coronavirus death in Washington State. Even if you give them all of those numbers, still doesn't add up. And I, in a way, like, I don't want, I don't want to let you know, get too much into the minutia. And go, this is wrong, and this is wrong. Because if, if you accept that, the, 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 you can't even accept their premise that some health threat gives them the right to violate your rights. Right? It doesn't. Not at all. Just no. Sorry, rights don't work like that. Reality doesn't work like that. And this is what we as libertarians have been saying from the very beginning, that you violate individual rights, basic ethical principles, you're going to have unintended consequences. The balance of the market, the equilibrium of supply and demand is humans seeking to have their needs met. And they individually, every single one of us has the right to weigh the cost of going out and risking getting the coronavirus Versus staying home and killing yourself. Because that's what's happening. So I've said from the beginning that at some point we are going to have to reckon the lives lost. And we've been bringing you even the medical stories. Just last week, cancer diagnoses down by 50%. It's not because people are getting less cancer. Because they're afraid to go get diagnosed and go out and get that treatment. This is going to lead to a whole other wave of, of consequences for the, the, the real health challenges that are ongoing epidemics. Obesity, cancer, smoking, all, all the chronic diseases. And you, know, the, 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 and you go, well, but Adam, we're, we're directing resources. You, know, you said the virus is real. We're Thing is, when you direct real, you direct resources away from real problems towards fake problems, people die unnecessarily. And I'm not just talking about the diversion of medical resources that we've already experienced. But let's 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 dive into it. This is the, this is the depth of of it, and we, we don't know. This is this is a little preliminary, right? It's August 13, 2020. The economic desperation is still cascading down upon us. The suicides, even if we had a, we, the key that we actually, what even if we actually got the perfect vaccine tomorrow that was legitimate, safe, and free, and like we found that chewing juniper berries cured Corona, like and that was it. It was the vaccine. You could just go, you know, grab some off a tree, and it, it, like even if we did that, and we've covered this economically, that half the jobs lost are gone permanently, businesses closed aren't coming back, suicides are going to continue to be a problem. So I want, I put this out on, on, to my audience on Twitter, Hannah Manny Forcine, H Forcine, H-F-O-R-S-E-E-N on Twitter. And, and CJ, you've got this in the links if you want to pull this up. She started this uh, on May 22nd. And, and we covered this story. She shared uh, Jeffrey Tucker, uh, his tweet about this friend of mine, great dude. California doctors say they've seen more deaths from suicide than coronavirus since lockdown. And that was that was May 22nd, June, July, August. We are three months minus a week from then. And that was the first major thing that we saw come out where it was like, okay, now we've got we've got proof. Proof that in some places suicides are a bigger problem than corona as a result of the lockdown specifically. Now, this isn't the, the decisive statistic yet, right? But she keeps going with this thread. So Tucker also posted, she shared this, suicides outpacing coronavirus deaths in Tennessee. California, so we, we knew 
back in May that this wasn't like an ice. It wasn't uh, some California town. Where, no. So there's there's more about this. San Francisco Bay Area doctors say they've seen more suicide deaths than coronavirus deaths since the shutdown. Worry about mental health issues becoming worse due to stay at home orders. I mean, there's there's so much of this here, but let's skip skip ahead. July twenty eighth. Hunger caused by government enforced lockdowns is leading to the deaths of ten thousand more children a month. It was never lives versus mere dollars. Kids who weren't likely to die of the virus are now starving to death because of the tyranny of privileged crowds. Yeah. I wasn't making this, and this is just, I mean, we could, we could skip ahead and talk about food, food bank lines, but let's, let's stick to the suicides for now. This is from July 28th. CDC director says there are more suicides and overdoses than COVID-19 deaths. So let's go to townhall.com to this, uh, this original source, July 28th. CDC director compares rate of suicides to COVID-19 deaths. CDC Director Robert Redfield said in a Buck Institute webinar that suicide and drug overdoses have surpassed the death rate for COVID-19 among high school students. Redfield argues uh, argued that lockdowns and lack of public schooling constituted a disproportionately negative impact on young people's mental health. As he said, quote, but there's been another cost that we've seen, particularly in high schools. We're seeing, sadly, far greater suicides now than we are deaths from COVID. We're seeing far greater deaths from drug overdose that are above excess that we had as background than we are seeing the deaths from COVID. So this is why I keep coming back to the overall social being of individuals, I assume mean social well-being. It's let's all work together and find out how we can find common ground to get these schools open in a way that people are comfortable and safe. According to this, roughly 146,000 people have died from COVID or COVID-related causes in the U.S. Now, a lot of these are, are misattributions of died with versus died from. And even with those, you got to factor in that one, one of the major tests being used here had a one-third false positive rate. So it could be a lot less than this. You know, teasing out the data from this is more than we're going to attempt with this segment today. The most recent publicized federal data records 48,000 deaths from suicide and at least 1.4 million attempts in 2018. In 2019, almost 71,000 people died from drug overdoses. Where Redfield obtained his data is unknown, although a doctor at John Muir Medical Center in Walnut Creek, California, claimed the facility has, quote, seen a year's worth of suicide attempts in the last four weeks. Quote from Hansen, what I've seen recently, I have never seen before. I've never seen so much intentional injury. And while health authorities will not have verified data regarding suicides and drug overdoses in 2020 for two more years. <laughs> yeah, COVID deaths, we can have, we can tell you COVID death rates before they happen. But suicides and drug overdoses, things that our policies are responsible for making worse. <laughs> Two years. Sit down, shut up if you want answers. No, but we we can do better than this. And we can. We can look at this. And we can look at these things now, even before we get the official numbers to compare. I mean, this is crazy. The Chicago Sun-Times looked specifically at black populations in Cook County, Illinois. The number of suicide deaths is already higher than for all of 2019. In Yakima County, Washington, one of the hot spots with the worst lockdowns, suicide rate has risen 30%. I mean, this is, I, I could keep going here. 30 to 40 million jobs have been lost due to the economic shutdown compared to 2.6 million in 2008. That's normal turnover versus, just to put that number in perspective, what does it mean? 40 million jobs lost. So we go to RT, 
My old employer is Russia today. Of course, we can trust them to give us a counter narrative to the mainstream American propaganda. Lockdown inspired suicides on course to dwarf coronavirus deaths in Australia and in time, even in U.S. According to studies. So this is a global problem. This is not just the United States. This is worth, you know, looking out around the world. And Australia, from everything I've read from other stories, is actually having some of the worst lockdown conditions. The global suicide rate is accelerating as coronavirus triggered lockdown, supercharged depression, and mass job losses push people over the edge. Australian and U.S. researchers have highlighted the threat to their countries. A spike in suicides triggered by COVID-19 lockdowns is expected to exceed deaths from the actual virus by a factor of 10. 10 in Australia. 10. You want to see you want you want to you want a number to try to put a scope? Try to put some scale on the destructiveness on this. I'm going to read this one more time. A spike in suicides triggered by COVID-19 lockdowns is expected to exceed deaths from the actual virus by a factor of 10 in Australia, according to researchers from Sydney University's Brain and Mind Center who published their findings on Thursday. And you thought I was exaggerating, saying the cure is worse than the disease. In the best case scenario, suicide rates will increase 25%, Professor Ian Hickey predicted, uh, observing that 40% of those would be among young people. If the Australian economy continues to deteriorate, suicide rates could increase 50%. That would add 750 to 1,500 suicides to the annual average of 3,000 deaths from suicide. And Hickey observed that these increased rates could persist up to five years if the economic downturn lasts more than 12 months. See, this has been studied before. When they imposed these lockdowns and shutdowns and they knew what they were doing economically, like, let's just point this out. Like, they knew. This was my accident. This is all engineered. And they have studies that show associated with economic downturns, you have that kind of increase in the suicide. So I, I got to get to some of these numbers here. Putting it into perspective, the coronavirus pandemic has killed 97 people in Australia. As of Thursday, over 264,000 people have died with the virus. At least RT gives that accurate worldwide, according to statistics compiled by Johns Hopkins. But while infection rates are beginning to level off or even fall in many countries, the economic hurt created by government responses to the pandemic has only just begun. Even before the lockdowns began, global suicide rates were going alarmingly upward, approaching more than 800,000, according to WHO. Two epidemics at once for the U.S. In the U.S., suicide was already at epidemic levels before COVID-19 pandemic hit, exploding over 35% since 1999. 48,344 suicides in 2018. Rights have climbed steeply in, area, in areas where economic deprivation is the most severe. I mean, this is, this is, I don't, I, I, you know, don't give up hope. Please, please, please don't give up hope in the face of all of this. I mean, just zooming out for a second to just more than suicide, cbsnews.com, the headline is, Coronavirus pandemic may lead to 75,000, quote, deaths of despair from suicide, drug, and alcohol abuse. you got to factor all that, all that other stuff in, too. Now, just about the disparity, or the, the, the desperation, rather, here, and, and the disparity between people who are, you know, taken care of, who got those government checks flowing, whose corporate jobs are safe right now. And they're not for long. And what they don't realize is that they may have made it safer for a while, but it's going to keep getting worse because the foundation of the population that you exploit to sit safely there on your perch is eroding as we speak. CBS Local, if it wasn't for this, we'd probably go hungry. Car line stretches more than a mile at Bear Park Food Giveaway. And I've said it's great. There's kind of a limit to how bad things can get, right? That 
we'll we'll still be able to feed each other. That, that we won't have people starving. But for how long? How long? The a lot of a lot of the food that is being given out at food banks is from long term food stores as well. It's not just current grocery leftovers. People are tapping into reserves. The suicide epidemic is just ramping up at this point. It's a it, it, it's not like hey I lost my job because of the shutdown I'm going to kill myself now because there's still hope it's going to come back. It's this kind of desperation. It's people begging for help. And you know what? Just to go back to, to Hannah Manny Forsey, and I want to give her credit for, for helping you know source a lot of this uh, and, and everybody on Twitter who, who responded to this. Domestic, she posted this on, uh, this was August 5th. Domestic violence more than doubled under lockdowns. You think that's going to contribute to suicide? And this also from August 5th, she uh, Hannah retweets from Sung Min Kim. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, roughly 1 in 12 American adults reported symptoms of anxiety disorder at this time last year. Now it's more than 1 in 3. There's no dramatic conclusion. There's no happy takeaway from this story. But please be looking out for people in your communities. Be looking out for your fellow Americans. And, and, and I feel like, you know, slapping a Band-Aid on a gaping wound here because there's such a deeper problem. But no, this is the time. I will say this is the time to adjust your policy and say, yeah, we need, you know what? There, there are people on the edge right now. There are a lot of people right now. It might be your friends, your neighbors, people you just haven't spoken to in a while. You think that you're doing okay. They're, they're not. Someone in your life is not doing okay right now. There was someone in your life right now, I suppose. I, I think we can kind of say this with statistical certainty, right? Given what we know. If you don't know someone directly, you know somebody who knows somebody. Who is going to attempt suicide in the next year because of this. I think that's a fair way of saying it. It's to bring this home. To let you, and yeah, I'm not going to be precise with the numbers. Seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Who knows? Who knows? But this is happening around you right now. People you know are affected by this. And there's a certain law of averages that says this touches everybody. And if it's not you, it's someone around you, reach out, be a part of the solution right now. You can make a difference. You can save a life. By not wearing a mask, by standing up to the propaganda too. Yeah, all of that. But especially right now, reaching out to people in need. Go save